Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how to access the SharePoint Admin Center. I'm going to be talking about not only how we access it, but what roles inside of Microsoft 365 you're going to need to be able to access the SharePoint Admin Center. As well as that, I'm going to give you some really handy SharePoint Admin tips on how to find sites that are using up all your storage space, advice around storage best practices, as well as that, we're going to be looking at some of the policies that you can access in the SharePoint Admin Center. They include things like sharing, external sharing, and other useful things that you're going to need to configure. Also, stick around to the end where we're going to be talking about the SharePoint Premium features, which is the advanced management features of SharePoint, which is going to help you get ready for things like Copilot and other compliance and administration tasks. So I'm going to show you two ways that you can access SharePoint Admin Center. Now, there's two ways that you could do this. The first is you go to any basically anywhere in Microsoft 365. Go to office.com and it'll take you to the home page of Microsoft 365. Now, you want to find the Admin button. Now, just by chance, because I access it quite often, I've got the Admin button down here. But you can also get to it through the App Launcher across the top, and you can see it's got the Admin button here. Don't get too confused that there's actually almost like slightly different icons. They are exactly the same button. They're going to take you to the exactly the same place. So if I was to click on it here, or if I was to click on the left-hand side, it's going to bring me to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Now, this is where sometimes people get a little bit unstuck because they're digging around looking for the SharePoint Admin Center. But actually, um, it's under the Show All button. Now, if you click on it here, you'll see you get loads more options suddenly appear. To be totally honest with you, I don't really know why Microsoft do that, that they've actually hidden quite a lot of it behind that Show All button. But you can see as soon as you click that Show All button, we then have this range of admin centers which appear, and we then have the SharePoint Admin Center button that we can click uh, down here. Once you click on it, it's then going to load up the SharePoint Admin Center, which looks a bit like this. Now I'm going to show you a second way. So say, for example, for some reason, if your Microsoft 365 admins have hidden that admin button, even though you have access to the SharePoint Admin Center, they might have hidden that admin button from people. So there's another cheeky way that you can get to the SharePoint Admin Center. Um, and I'm going to show you that in a second. And then what I'm going to do is walk you through some of the features of the SharePoint Admin Center. So the second way and the more direct way to get to the SharePoint Admin Center, um, and this is the way that I would probably do it just because it's so much quicker, is if you look at the URL of your SharePoint site. Now, every SharePoint site, uh, or SharePoint Online site, I should say, um, its URL looks something like this. It'll be HTTPS followed by whatever your company name is, or, or I should say your domain name is, .sharepoint.com, and then quite often your SharePoint site would say something like sites, intranet, uh, oh, if we can spell intranet, intranet, let's try this for a third time, intranet, something like that, um, or it could be um, whatever it was called, uh, hub, or whatever the name of your intranet would be, so I've just got name here. Now, to access the Admin Center, what you can do is if you just remove everything from here, and then if you add a hyphen and then admin, this is the URL of the SharePoint Admin Center. So just by copying and pasting that into um, a browser will automatically open up your Admin Center if you have access. Now, this brings me on to the next thing. If you can't see the Admin button, and using that trick that I just showed you doesn't work, as in you, it doesn't take you to Admin Center, it just brings up a message as you do not have access. It means you do not have access to the SharePoint Admin Center. And the reason for this is that you do not have the right role assigned to your Microsoft 365 account. So what you would actually need to do is have somebody that has either global admin access or essentially the access to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center to go into the admin, the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, go under users, find your user account, and then go to roles and make sure that you've either got the SharePoint administrator role assigned to you or the global admin. So by clicking on manage roles, they would be able to go into here and they'd be able to see um, what roles were uh, assigned to you. So you can either have admin center access, which gives you access to everything, or if it was just specified as one of the roles, you would want the SharePoint administrator role. I do have another video, which is all about SharePoint permissions, which goes into a lot more detail about all of that stuff. So if you do need help with SharePoint permissions, go and check that video out after this. 
So let's have a bit of a walkthrough of the admin center. Now, there's a lot of tabs on the left-hand side here that you're probably just never going to need to use as a SharePoint admin. Um, but I'm gonna walk you through at a high level what each of them are, just so you're aware of them. The first is probably the most commonly used, which is the Sites tab. Now, this is where if you click on Active Sites, you'll see a list of all the different SharePoint sites that you have inside of your um, SharePoint Admin Center. From here, obviously, you can create more SharePoint sites. You could delete some. Um, and probably the most important thing that you could do inside of this area is actually look at the storage. So you could look at the, the slightly larger sites versus um, the ones which don't have as much space. Now, this is just a demo tenant, so I don't really have a lot stored in here. But you will notice that there is actually um, a total amount of storage that's available. SharePoint isn't just this endless pit that you can keep just lobbing documents and content into. Eventually, it will fill up. Now, this will be slightly different for every organization. But for a small, medium-sized organization, you could probably expect that to be somewhere between 1 to 3 terabytes. Now, I know that sounds like quite a lot of storage space. But actually, when you think about how many SharePoint sites you could end up with, how much content you end up with, especially if you're storing things like images and videos and very large file sizes, this can quickly get exceeded. Now, you can purchase more storage space if you wanted to, but the best thing from an admin perspective is to actually identify the heavy usage SharePoint sites by using this um, filter on the storage used to look at the larger to smaller, and then start digging into why that SharePoint site is much larger than the rest. And as I say, when I look at this quite often uh, for clients, you would find that this would be because they're either storing things like videos and large images, um, or it could be that they've just gone a bit nuts with the amount of versions that they're storing on that particular SharePoint site, because every single version is actually essentially a copy of the document, meaning it's duplicating that version X amount of times that you're saving. So say, for example, you've got version uh, enabled on your document libraries and you're saving 500 versions of every single document that's 500 times the storage space of every single document that you have so it might be uh, a case of either removing some documents or rem limiting the amount of versions that you're actually saving the next thing which is quite useful under this tab is the deleted sites so this is where you could go now you can see i don't have any deleted sites right now but um, you can see that any deleted sites would appear here and they, they are basically retained for 93 days and then they're permanently deleted. Now, if you don't have a recovery tool, once the sites are deleted from here, they are gone. There's no getting them back. There's no contacting your support or Microsoft partner. There's no contacting um, Microsoft themselves to get it back. They are gone if you do not have a backup and recovery tool. So I would suggest that if you don't have one, it's probably worth considering getting a backup and recovery tool. We then have containers. Now, I wouldn't really think that most admins would need to be too bothered about this. This is much more for kind of development use and, and storing um, apps and things like that. Then we have policy. So again, this is an area that you will probably will want to know about as a SharePoint admin. Um, the policies include things like sharing. So Sharing policies essentially is where you can enable things like external sharing. So you can have um, different levels of access for both SharePoint and OneDrive. So it's worth noting that you can control both SharePoint and OneDrive from um, this admin center. Now, there's a couple of different defaults that we can set here. Um, I was just like, rather than defaults, this is more like the maximum that you're going to allow. So I've got it enabled so I can have anyone which means users can share files and folders using links that don't require any signing, which means I can share things externally, completely anonymous, and anyone can access it. Or we could have new and guests, um, new and existing guests, which basically means I have to create them an account and bring them in as a guest. Or I can say existing guests, so it's only people that are existing guests, or I can say only people in my organization, which means there's no external sharing whatsoever. Now, depending on your scenario, it will depend on what level of access you want to give to this. If you're sort of playing around with external sharing, um, one of the things that often people do is that they'll have, say, their SharePoint site being set to completely no external access, but then they might la allow external access for um, OneDrive, for example. So there's different levels of access that we can give to different things, depending on our scenario. Um, so as I say, um, you can play around with these sliders to find the, the, the right level of access that you want to give uh, to your users. 
some other things down here as well. So some other file and folder links um, that we can set as part of our sharing policies. So we can choose the type of link that is selected by default. So is that only people in the organization, specific people, and on with the link. So again, from a security perspective, you might want to set only people in the organization as the default. That doesn't mean that if you've got this enabled that people can change that, but it just means that you're less likely to accidentally have links flying around that people can, anyone in the world can use to access those documents. Uh, we can choose the, the permission that's selected by default. Again, either edit or view. Um, so again, this might be, if you, it's quite confidential information, you just might want, might want to make it view, stop people from editing it. And you can also choose an expiration and permissions options for anyone uh, links as well. So if you wanted to, you could say that the links will expire after X amount of days. Um, and there's some other configuration options down here, which is worth looking at. Um, other than the policies, you also have things like access control. So this is where you can do things like managing unman, uh, sorry, you can control unmanaged devices. So you restrict access from devices that aren't compliant or joined to a domain. You can even have things like idle session sign out. So automatically sign out users from inactive browser sessions. So if you're worried about people using your SharePoint sites from uh, public computers in a library, for example, or on a shared device that multiple people are using at your organization, you can have it uh, time out. So it forces people to sign back in again as well. Again, there's some other kind of um, policies that down here that might be worth having a look at, but those two ones are probably the most commonly used. We then have a settings tab. Um, now, I wouldn't worry too much about the kind of settings um, tab, to be honest. Again, there's not a huge amount necessarily that you're going to configure here on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the only two I'd really draw your attention to is a site storage limit. So again, use automatic or manual storage limits. So you can actually keep things under control so you haven't just got one SharePoint site which is using up all that storage space. And then in a similar kind of train of thought, the version history limit, so set how many file versions are kept within SharePoint and OneDrive. Again, we can set that so we can make sure that things don't store loads and loads of versions which inevitably is going to use up all of our storage space. Again, I'm just going to quickly fast track over a couple of these extra ones. So content services. So these are things like term stores and content type galleries. This is a lot more advanced SharePoint. Um, to simplify, it's basically tagging. So if you wanted to create very advanced tagging, um, this is where you could set that up. Migration is if you're looking to migrate um, from a particular third party like Box or Google, Dropbox, Ignite. These areas will help you get started with that migration manager tool. Um, then I just want to, to talk a quick uh, moment about reports. So this is where you can generate some data access governance. So a couple of really useful things in here. So sharing links will actually generate a report to help you identify potential oversharing uh, by monitoring sites where users create new shared links in SharePoint. So especially when we're moving into an age of AI and Copilot, things like oversharing is going to be something which is going to be a bit of a challenge and staying on top of that is definitely advised so basically copilot will have access to everything that you as a user has access to so if things are being overshared to the wrong people copilot will have access to that even if the user doesn't uh, or they're not aware that that's been shared to them so making sure you stay on top of that is advised and the same goes for sensitivity labels as well. So if you're applying sensitivity labels, um, this report will help you monitor sensitive content by reviewing the sites where sensitive files are stored and the policies applied to those specific SharePoint sites. Again, I'm just going to skip over some of the advanced um, stuff because this is basically just API access. Again, this is something that's going to be really just for kind of developers use. Um, and then quickly, I'm just going to touch on the advanced management. Now, this is um, the pro features of SharePoint, so the SharePoint premium features. This does require an additional license, um, but it is essentially there to help you manage and govern SharePoint and OneDrive with advanced tools that are going to enhance Microsoft 365 secure collaboration abilities. Um, so essentially with this, you're getting these additional features listed here. So you can do things like block download policies for SharePoint and OneDrive, uh, the change history so you can find who made particular sites or organization settings changes and when. Uh, conditional access policies for SharePoint and OneDrive, so control whether users can access sensitive sites based on conditions like location or operating system. 
Uh, data access governance report, so discover potential oversharing, keep track of sites that have sensitive files. So this is a much more deep dive version of that report we were talking about earlier. And often when people are looking at Copilot, the reason why I think Microsoft kind of gave us this SharePoint premium features um, alongside of Copilot is because there's a lot of readiness and pre preparation that needs to go in ahead of rolling out Copilot. And these SharePoint uh, premium features are going to help us do that. Uh, default sensitive labels for document libraries, so help make sure sensitive project files are, are appropriately labeled. OneDrive access restriction, allow only particular groups of users to uh, access OneDrive. Uh, recent actions, so review recent sites changes um, that have been made. Site life uh, cycle management, automate tasks across the life cycle of your sites. And site level access restriction, allow admins to restrict access to specific SharePoint sites and their content. So this is just going to basically get your admin center and pump it full of steroids and give you loads more control than you have without the box default SharePoint admin center. 